Here we're talking about some specific things uh, to do with sound, uh, interference, beats, and diffraction. Um, normally we do this in class, so it'd be really good to have a tuning fork and, and try this, but a tuning fork is this, this kind of thing, right? It's shaped like this. It kind of looks like a fork that you'd eat off of, but it just has two kind of thick tines, we call those things. So each of those things is called a tine. So a tuning fork just has two tines. If you hold the handle down here and you ding the tines on something, so you kind of, I don't know, ding it on your textbook or something like that, the tines actually move back and forth. So they move out this way together, and then they both move in this way together. So you can kind of see on this diagram down here, uh, where is my pointer there? Uh, those arrows are trying to show that the, the tines are going to move outwards together, inwards together, outwards together, inwards together. As it does that, those tines um, kind of squeeze the air molecules when they come close together. They squeeze it in, on the inside, and that makes a compression in between the tines. At the same moment, it's going to make a rarefaction outside. Okay, so when you get um, a compression on the inside, you're actually going to get a rarefaction on the outside. And when it gets a rarefaction on the inside, you're going to get a compression on the outside. So at any given moment, you get the opposite on the inside of the outside. Here's kind of what it looks like. You can kind of see this little animation as the tines wiggle back and forth. If I just focus on one side, so imagine, you know, you're over here somewhere. Here you are. Ooh. Here's your ear. The sound as it comes into your ear, you're kind of hearing this like compression, rarefaction, compression, rarefaction. That's what makes the sound. What we're getting then is um, as a compression is kind of squeezed out going out this way, rarefaction's moving, and then following right behind it, just remember the animation from previously, we're getting a compression and then a rarefaction. What we're, what we're kind of seeing from this though, actually if I can kind of show you here quickly, this is what it would look like from a top view. What you can kind of see is, I'll go back in a sec, but going out along this line and this line and this line and this line, you're seeing a lot of mo uh, molecule movement, a lot of molecular movement. Whereas if you could go along this line, look at those little dots along that line, they hardly move at all. Same thing here, here, and here. Okay, so what we're kind of seeing is we're getting this loud region it's loud kind of going out this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. Whereas it's relatively quiet, uh, I'll try green to match this, it's relatively quiet um, along the green lines. Whoops, quiet. The nodal lines are spots where the molecules don't really move. Whereas the loud regions, we call those antinodal lines. And there's a lot of molecular movement there, which means we hear it, it's loud. Okay, so normally I would demo this with a tuning fork. If you ding a tuning fork and kind of turn it, you can kind of hear the loud, quiet, loud, quiet. What's happening on these nodal lines is we're getting this, this destructive interference. If you were very tiny and could kind of sit right on that line, it might be silent. More likely it's just gonna be quiet. Okay, so again, you can kind of picture here along the uh, red lines, the molecules are really moving a lot. And along the blue lines, there's not much molecule movement. This again is a tuning fork. If I held a tuning fork and you were like up above it, looking down, that's kind of what you would see. If you could see our molecules. Uh, yeah, there it is, nodal lines, antinodal lines. Uh, there's some little animations there. Hopefully the links still work. Um, but if you did that, you could actually hear what we call beats. Beats are, are this, if two notes sound at the same time. So here's one, here's the other. I would typically in class, I would take two tuning forks. We would ding them at the same time. The two different frequencies are going to interfere with each other. And you can kind of see like right here along this line, they're both crests at the same moment. We're going to get constructive interference. Whereas right here along this line, one is a trough when the other is a crest, we're gonna get destructive interference. What that means is we're gonna hear a loud sound here and then a quiet sound here, and then loud and then quiet and so on. Beats are that kind of loud, quiet, loud, quiet. 
So here's two notes, and again, you can kind of see where the constructive interference happens, where the destructive interference happens. Uh, for some reason, my letters are a little bit off here, but that D is here, that C is here, that D is there. I think this C is supposed to be over here. If we had these two notes, we would hear some kind of a beat frequency between them. And it's um, the beat frequency is one full cycle of, um, it's supposed to be here from C, from loud, to quiet to loud. Okay, so the beat is one full cycle of that, or quiet to loud to quiet, that works as well. Uh, C, yeah, so the C's are constructive interference, the D's are destructive interference. Let's try it with those numbers. If I put in, this, there's those two different frequencies, two tuning forks or something, I put in my two frequencies. So one of them is 350, the other one is 355. It doesn't matter what order you put them in. These lines here are the absolute value bars, same as you would do in your math class. We subtract 350 minus 355, we get negative 5. We're going to take the absolute value of that, we just get positive 5. If you put your 355 here and 350 here, you would have just got positive 5 right away. So those absolute value bars there just mean take, take the positive uh, answer. The beat frequency then is really just the difference in, of the two frequencies. Okay, so beat frequency in this case, 5 hertz. Here's kind of what's going on. So I tried to estimate on this little animation here, I tried to estimate what is the frequency of that one, and my guess is about 1 hertz. What's the frequency of this one? I don't know, about 0.7 hertz. That's just my estimation. But what's happening is you can kind of see right along uh, this line right here, <laughs> as it goes up and down, right where it's biggest. I wish I could freeze this, but right where um, where the, the, oh, the blue lines, oops, let's go back here, right where the blue lines here, right where it's biggest, I'll try to follow along with this laser pointer, that's because the two peaks here line up, the two crests line up. Whereas right here where the, the, uh, there's most destructive interference happening, that's where a crest and a trough line up. You could try to just freeze this and uh, see if you can see that a little better. Let me get rid of this, these lines here. What's happening though is the two frequencies sound together. The resultant constructive and destructive interference pattern gives me something like this. And where it's really big, whoop, that keeps happening. Where it's really big, like right in the center of this kind of part here, that's where it's loud. Right over here, it's quite quiet. These little black dots are supposed to be air molecules. So you can imagine these air molecules right in here, uh, where it's not moving much. Um, it's quiet, and then in here, where they're dancing up and down, that's where it's loud. So right in here, they're moving up and down a lot. That's loud sound. Right in here, they hardly move, that's the quiet. All right, let's try a question. What are you actually gonna you know, see when you do these questions? Here's what you're gonna see. Uh, somebody, some guy named Shane, that's me, uh, plays two strings of his guitar simultaneously. One string has this frequency, so let's just say here, F1. One, one of the strings has a frequency, 650 hertz. The other one, I don't know. Okay, so what's the other string? That's the big question mark. But we know that he hears two beats in two seconds, or six beats in two seconds. Okay, so we know that frequency, any frequency, is the number of cycles divided by time. Beat frequency is no exception. So beat frequency, he hears the number of beats is six, and he hears that in two seconds. Okay, so any frequency, including beat frequency, is governed by that. Six divided by two, three hertz. There's our beat frequency. We're not looking for beat frequency though, we're looking for the other frequency. So beat frequency we know, F1 minus F2. Don't forget the absolute value. I'm gonna sub in here. So beat frequency is three. One of the frequencies is 650. And the question mark is, what is that other frequency right there? These absolute values, here's, hopefully you can remember this from your math class, these absolute value bars, when I deal with those in math, if I drop the absolute values, I'm gonna to have to put a plus or minus over here. Because remember, whatever I get out of the inside of this thing could be positive or negative, but I took absolute values, so I'm not sure which, which this answer is. Okay, so the way that you do this mathematically is like this. 
So we drop the absolute values. I get a plus or minus in front of the three. I'm going to bring my three to the left side and my F2 to, so my F2 is going to come to the left over here. It's going to become positive. My plus or minus three, I'm going to bring to the right. It can just stay as plus or minus. Sometimes people put minus on top now and plus on the bottom just to indicate that you've brought it to the other side, but it doesn't really matter. Frequency two then, I'm going to get two answers. Either it's 650 plus three, so you can kind of see that plus sign there, or it's 650 minus three. Okay, so it's either 653 hertz or 650 minus three, 647 hertz. Either one of those, I don't know which one of those it is. So it's one of those. Uh, they ask in the question, what are the possible frequencies? There's the two possible frequencies. I'm just not sure which one. Oh yeah, we got it. 